What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Canes Inside Daily Podcast, powered by Anna Jar and Levine. Spring game is approaching. It's on Saturday. A lot to talk about. We'll be going through the top five players I'm most excited about to watch in the spring game. Also, great interview with Canes Connection athlete, offensive tackle, Tommy Kinsler. He was awesome. You guys are going to really love that interview. Great kid. Tons of talent. Huge upside with that kid. So, a lot to get into. I've been working extremely hard on some stuff I think Kings fans are going to be excited about in the future. I mean, I've been taking a bath in a day. I look like Speedy Gonzalez here, haven't shaved. But uh, we're working on stuff that Kings fans are going to really like um, in the future. I want to talk about people that are always working for you, and that's Anajar and Levine, accident attorneys. If you or someone you care about has been injured in an accident, you could be entitled to significant compensation. Go with the people that are going to work for you tirelessly to get what you deserve. Dial 1 800 747 free, 1 800 747 3733. The absolute best in the business all over Florida. This is what they do. They're specialists. Take back control of your life, Anajar and Levine. All right. So I wanted to talk about the top five players that I'm most excited to see in the spring. These are folks we've seen over the course of spring practice. And whether it's just the talent they've shown, the position, some of the competition at their positions, these are guys that I really want to see under the, under the lights here on Saturday at the spring game, starting with quarterback. You always start with quarterback. We know, Everybody else see Cam Ward. I've seen him play. I know what he can do. Emory and Jakari I've seen last year. The person I really haven't seen compete in a game-type setting in the orange and green is Reese Poppenbarger, the quarterback transfer out of Albany. I would like to see what he does under that you know, really the biggest spotlight he's been under. I mean, I know Albany played some big games at that level, but there's a lot of this ACC, people are going to be watching this spring game all over the country to see what he's made of. It's a lot of pressure for him, more so than your average spring game for a quarterback. He is someone that over the course of the spring, in my personal opinion, and based on people I've spoken to, everybody has different opinions, but I think Reese Poffenbarger is probably best positioned for that number two spot with Emery right on his tails. Uh, I think his his – Ability to get out of the pocket and both run and throw has been very exciting. He has the ability to run. He has had big runs against our defense at this level. And his arm strength is nice. He can throw on the run with twitch and deliver the ball into small spaces. How is he going to react against, again, a Miami defense and the pressure of the crowd? People are going to be watching him. There's going to be people in the crowd that don't think or they don't know if he is you know D1 caliber, right? They're saying, okay, there's a transfer from Albany. What can he really do? So a little bit of pressure on him. I think he's going to rise to the occasion and have people buzzing in a positive way based on what I've seen to this point in spring. I think it's going to come down to his athleticism. People are going to be surprised by how quick he is, how twitchy he is, and then also his arm strength. I think it's going to surprise people. This is not a pop gun arm. This is someone with a lot of physical ability, not the height necessarily, but a lot of physical tools that will translate, and you guys will see for yourself on Saturday. So Reese Poffenbarger is number one on my list to watch. Tight battle with Emory Williams for that number two spot. Number two player I am watching on Saturday, wide receiver JoJo Trader, the star true freshman from Chaminade. If you listen to this podcast, he has been making plays every single practice, showcasing the smooth movement ability, the ability to change speeds, the ability to make contested catches. I compared him, again, not saying he's going to be as good or have the kind of career, but style-wise, to Devontae Smith. You'll be able to see him on Saturday. And I think he's going to have a big opportunity to go against first-team defensive backs. There's been a couple of nicks in the receiver room, nothing serious, but enough is going to give him an opportunity, I believe, to get snaps with the first team and against the first team. So you'll be able to see him in that environment. Full contact as well. These DBs are going to be hitting. Is he going to be able to hold on to the ball, make these contested catches, take hits, be tough, do the things he needs to do to go from a, a great receiver in sort of a skeleton environment, right? A seven on seven environment to full contact football environment that you'll see in the spring game. So we're very excited to see what Jojo trader can do. I think he's going to put on a show for the fans and get people talking another true freshman, because I'm a huge fan of watching the true freshmen early. I know what the veterans can do. We got film on them. Let's see these true freshmen, Cole McConaughey, defensive end out of mobile, Alabama, true freshman, three-star kid that Miami prioritized a lot, valued a lot, went, after aggressively and got flipped from Louisville commitment to Miami again from mobile Alabama, extremely productive there. He was almost like a Reuben Bain in Alabama. As far as his sack production at Alabama, he is wearing the number 44, which gets people excited. gets me excited because we know the history of that number. And he's someone just 
he missed a little bit of spring early on, just recovering from an injury. So he's had less spring practices than others. But now that he's played, the motor, obvious. You saw it on film in high school. That has translated the size, the movement ability. He looks like a very, very exciting player that could potentially be a major factor for Miami down the road. Want to see him in full contact. Obviously, he's not going to sack the quarterbacks because the quarterbacks aren't live. But how's he going to do against Miami's strong offensive tackle room? Is he going to be able to get to the quarterback? Is he going to be able to hold up and, and, uh, and run support, use his hands? I want to see what he does because what I've seen so far in, in team drills and in, in, on, in practice is that this is a guy who has a chance to vastly, vastly outperform his current recruiting ranking and validate Miami's interest in him because Miami thought this guy was an absolute stud. They got the tip from Phillip Rivers, the old quarterback for the Chargers, whose team played against him in Alabama and said, hey, this guy's a dude. Uh, I believe he told uh, Coach Stroud, who coached with Philip or Coach Philip Rivers in college at NC State. So he got the tip from him. Philip Rivers said, "This guy's the man." The high school production validated that. Now we're seeing it in, in practice so far. Looks good. Let's see it in the spring game. Cole McConathy, number forty-four. Watch out for that one. You notice this is a little busier on the table than it used to be. That's because I'm stopped by Canesware yesterday. We did the Canesware live show. You see it on YouTube. Brought some some merchandise, you know, flat bill hats, Canes Old English. Got the 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 camo. You got more traditional one. Uh, just awesome gear, Canes. Where it's the 14th anniversary of Canes. Where so everything in the store is 14 percent off in the store or at the shop. Panthers fan. I got the rat here. I got this hat, which I wear pretty much every day. Um, go to Canes. Where 14th anniversary, 14 percent off everything in the store or on Caneswear.com. The absolute best. All right, talking about another true freshman. I mentioned JoJo Trader. I mentioned Cole McConathy. Zaquan Patterson, the elite safety recruit out of Chaminade, high school teammate of JoJo Trader. I just want to see him fully unleashed from a physicality standpoint. You know, these practices, it's very rare that you're taking guys all the way down to the ground. So I want to see the physicality of Zaquan Patterson in a game setting. He's someone that can blitz. You saw that in high school. He's someone that can cover. Still needs to learn on, you know, Reduce some of the grabbiness from the high school level. He's going to have to learn how to not get penalized, but he does have some natural coverage ability, picking things up fast, drawing rave reviews from people at Miami about his his character and the way he's learning things. I want to see that physicality. He's got a big old body. You see it there. He's big dude. How is he going to hit and, and, and strike when the gloves are off and he could tackle guys all the way to the ground? That's what I want to see from Zaquan Patterson. I'm excited to see what he brings, along with the whole safety room, but particularly number 20. Again, just like Cole McC McConathy, it's an important number in Miami, 44 and 20. Two true freshmen. be nice to see those guys repping it. Plus, JoJo Trader's number six. For those of us who grew up in the 2000 Hurricanes, six on offense, 44 and 20 on defense, big numbers. Let's see if those guys fill those shoes. One more guy, not a true freshman, but a young player, Riley Williams, the tight end out of Oregon, big-time recruit last year, picked Miami over, over Ohio State, over Alabama, um, really just a top end talent type player. We got him. He, he showed some flashes last year, had a nice touchdown against Georgia tech. You saw the size, but he was still young coming into spring. He's gained weight. He looks huge. He's a, at least six, five two fifty. Maybe I'm underestimating him. He is a big, big dude. You'll see it on spring when you watch the spring game and he can make catches, man. He's an athlete. He's a great receiver. He needs some consistency, like all young players. So I'd love to see him come out in the spring game and have a big game. The big narrative, Miami throwing to tight ends. I think Elijah Arroyo's return as the starter is going to help because he's an NFL guy. He's viewed that way internally. Cam Ward loves him. Let's see what happens when you throw Riley Williams in the mix as another big athletic weapon that Miami can throw the ball to. Gives Cam Ward another option. I'm excited to see what he does, first team and second team. I think he'll get reps with both. People keep asking me, Danny, where is this painting from? I see you on the YouTube. I see the Dennis Smith bat signal behind you. Where's that from? That is my man Suave at Open Slate Apparel. He is the just a huge Canes fan, stud artist. He makes this. He makes mugs with this image. He makes all kinds of different Canes products. Got this on canvas. Got this on posters. You can see him at Kane City Cartel uh, on Instagram. That is C-A-N-E City Cartel, one word on Instagram. And again, the link to his Printify shop is going to be in our, in our description. Support Suave, man. He's a great Canes fan, and he does great work like this. Don't get art at Michael's or Bed Bath & Beyond. Support a Canes fan. Get something you can really get behind, which is this bat signal, which 
By the way, pay attention to canesinsight.com. You might be seeing that bad signal in the near future. So definitely be checking out the Canes Insight board to see that. Pete, you got someone you want to talk about here. We had a Peter Reese who's producing the show. You know him as the scoop man. He scooped Mark Rick going to Miami. He was on ESPN and all that. He's taken a break from the scoops lately to be more of a producer, more of a, of a setup man. But he dusted off the, the reporter's shoes and, and broke some stories on Kane's basketball. So I'll kick it to Pete right now. So, D, this is an interesting one. We tweeted it out this morning. But Stefan Sicic, I hope we're saying the name right there, big Zerbian man uh, who's been playing the last couple years out of the Chicago area, will be visiting Miami this weekend as I play the highlights here. D, you and I were watching this guy before the show and – took a huge jump from his junior to senior film. Looks like a late bloomer in the process. He's listed at seven feet on his highlight tape. I don't know if he's quite seven feet yet, but definitely 6'10", 6'11". And again, body type from junior year to senior year looks a lot leaner. Not a stiff guy out there. The competition does not look great, um, but he's doing what he's supposed to do against that, that level there. And he has a wherewithal around the basket, right? I mean, we... We were watching him again, and you can chime in here as well. He had some moves around the basket. Um, he had some nice reverse layups and spin moves around around the hoop as well. Again, not playing incredible competition here, but SMU has come in here late. Miami, obviously, uh, a factor now in, in the recruitment as he'll be visiting this weekend. Um, and, and Boise State as well. Georgia Tech has offered him. So a lot of times with these big men, as you know, D, they, they – blossom late um but he he seems like a guy he says his father played professionally as well um so interesting piece of information here as miami continues to try to load up on big men lynn kid the transfer from virginia tech will also be in town this weekend uh but d you know what were your thoughts based on what we saw yeah like you said pete late bloomer you could tell i've we've seen all seen that before marcus soul came to mind not because he's going to be a you know, all NBA player, just saying Marcus soul played high school in Memphis. He, his body wasn't quite what it would become. He, he was still growing into his body, but you saw flashes. And then he became a player that was better than anybody thought he would ever be. Um, Ivaka Zubak from the, from the Clippers similar. So with these big men, it's hard to tell, especially when their bodies are going through a lot of changes. I think, like you said, from the junior film to the senior film, his ability to get off the ground, completely different is footwork around the basket. I mean, he just looks like a much, much different player um, and someone that's very exciting for Canes fans, I think, to 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 consider being in this class as a developmental big man. We're, the portal we'll talk about, and we're going to have a whole show about the portal and some of the things Miami's doing and bringing in once the dust settles a little bit there. But you always have to bring in high school players, and this one here has upside because of the size and skill. And D, uh, there's, a, there's a part of the highlight tape, which we didn't get to before, but they have his passing highlights here. He, he looks like those uh, he looks like those European big men who, who have that ability to, to pass the ball, especially when you, know, you feel that double team coming from, from the help side. So like you said, more of a developmental type, right? You're not expecting him to come in and be the man right away, but you need to stockpile these bodies. That's why they're in the position they're in right now. Uh, have been the last couple of years where they haven't really had a reliable true big man. Obviously let's not downgrade what Norchad O'Meara meant to this program the last two years. And he played that role. He had to, but you need some size. You need some, some depth down low um, at the power forward and center spots. So interesting one right there for sure, but I'll kick it back to you here. Um, as I know we have some exciting stuff coming up this weekend around the spring game. We got, first of all, on this show, we got a great interview coming up with someone who, you know, he fancies himself a basketball player, right, Pete? And that's Tommy Kinsler, the tackle for the Miami Hurricanes, super talented guy. A lot of people think he's NFL future with with his ability. Uh, he talks about playing basketball as a big man and, and breaks down the game of his fellow office alignment. Awesome interview um, from Kane's Connection athlete, Tommy Kinsler. And look, talk about Kane's Connection. If you're going to the spring game on Saturday, after the event, we will be having an exclusive Q&A uh, and, and and live stream at Titanic right across the street from, from where the, the scrimmage is being held on campus for Kane's Connection members. It's the fifth quarter. I'll be there. Pete will be there. Kane's Connection athletes will be there for interviews. We're going to have a lot of fun breaking down what we just saw, talking to the players, taking questions from the fans. It is going to be absolutely an awesome event, the fifth quarter on Saturday after the spring game. And look, even quicker, today's Thursday. Today, we have a Zoom call 
for Canes Connection members that use promo code CIS, they will be able to have an exclusive Zoom call with myself to ask questions about the team and understand and get information that is not public. I mean, I, more information than I could share here, more information than I could share on canesinsight.com. I give you a ton, as you know, following the last recruiting class and following some of the portal cycles, but some stuff is, is not fit for a public forum. This is a more private setting. If you're a Canes Connection member using promo code CIS to sign up, you will have access. Also, if you use promo code CIS, not only do you get access to that chat, you get 20% off. Come support this team. You'll see with Tommy Kinsler. You want guys like Tommy that are you know, 6'6", 320, freak athletes and great kids? You got to play the game. And the game, unfortunately, or fortunately, is, is different than it used to be. Sign up for Canes Connection, the official NIL collective of Miami Hurricanes. Use promo code CIS, 20% off. You'll be happy you did, and you will be part of that sixth national championship. So without further ado, let's talk to Tommy Kinsler. All right, Canes fans, big interview here with a big man on the <laughs> offensive line, Tommy Kinsler, Canes Connection athlete. Appreciate you joining the show today, man. Sure. Want the Canes fans to get to know you a little bit today. The offensive linemen don't get the love that they deserve, <laughs> right? And obviously, offensive line is a huge thing right now at mm. Miami. Appreciate you taking some time today, Tommy. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing good. How about y'all? Doing well, man. Doing well. And, and obviously, it's been a good spring for you. Talk a little bit about, before we get into a bunch of stuff here, but just talk about spring football as a whole. Obviously, the, sp the spring game coming up mm. uh, in the next week here. Uh, so how have things been going for you? It's been going good. Actually, I've been starting to uh, get get like better with the playbook. I like just moving quicker than I ever have before. And just moving guys. And, like, just been looking great. Like the technique got better. Like everything got better with footwork, footwork, play hand placements, just moving guys off the ball easily now than what I was last year. And obviously you play a position that it's changed, right? You guys are athletes now. It's not just you guys are big fellas who can't can't really move, right? So yeah. talk to me about your journey growing up, not only as a football player, but other yeah. sports that you played and getting to this point now where you're an office lineman now, you're all in now. But yeah. growing up, what was your sports uh what did it look like growing up? Like growing up, my mom, she had us like all oh, my brothers and sisters, she had to play everything. Like me and my brother, we started off from flag football to baseball, to basketball. She even played, put us in soccer just to try it out. That it was like, once we're growing up, she just stuck us to uh, uh, football. I stuck to football, but my other brothers, they stuck to basketball and football. So I just left it to them and just stuck to football growing up. You think that yeah. helped you? I mean, be as athletic yeah, definitely. as well, right? It definitely helped me because it helped with my footwork a lot. I'm mean, like, my balance and stuff, basketball then. <clears throat> so, you're coming from Ocala, right? This is Gator country normally. <laughs> and not only Gator country, but, I mean, you got a whole bunch of schools that, that that come into that area every year. It's not necessarily a place that Miami gets a whole lot of guys. Mm -hmm. from. So talk about your recruiting process a little bit. And why was it Miami at the end of the day? And why was it the right choice for you? Um, reason I chose Miami was really because of Coach Chris Ball and Mayor Ball. Like those two there, like in the offensive line room, having a head coach in the offensive line room, and like him coaching us too, it's just we had that bond. And you know, like coming from a head coach, he played offensive line too. So I just look, really looked at that and watched Coach Mirabal's stats coming up as him his recruiting. Like he just kept on me, like to say he really, they really, really love the way I play. And I just like that about that. And like from Florida, they was doing the same thing, but. Just me and Chris Ball and Mary Ball, we just had that really that tight bond. Like they even checked up on my family, my my uh, stepdad, not my stepdad, but uh, what do you call it? Uh, he you got he uh, name what you call? It? Godfather. Um, yeah, Godfather. There, there you go. There you go. His name Rondo Fernandez. Shout out to him. He been, he's been through my journey for the longest, like since growing up, little days. He's been there since little league. Right. Shout out to him. I just thank, thank you for that. Speaking of Little League, man, I think there's a clip somewhere out there of you scoring a <laughs> touchdown to Pop Warner. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. As that's where I started. Talk, talk to me a little bit about, about that. And we you said you played other sports, but what position? I mean, were you, you obviously were a skill position guy at one point. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they actually my first position playing football was center. Like that's why I really started at it. Then once I got older, growing up and getting taller, they just moved me all around the whole line. They put me at wide receiver at one point. You know, I was scoring that touchdown. <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> then, say how'd that how'd that go? You know, fade ball is me. My favorite <laughs> favorite play, fade ball. Throw it to him. We'll go grab it. <laughs> then they yeah. put me they they also put me at running back. My fault, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Finish, finish. No, I'm saying, I mean, are you looking like the like like uh like the, the fridge out there or what? <laughs> yeah, they throw me, they just throw me the ball like on the five yard line. I score every time. <laughs> score every time I score. <laughs> Tell me, I want to yeah. ask you, you know, there's a lot of great athletes in the offensive line room right now. Yeah. Who is the best athlete in that room? I mean, sure. We all, we all, we all best bet like everybody, good athletes, everybody. But I feel like I feel like we all we all got that potential. And, uh, Tommy, Tommy's got the potential, man. He's got to go back <laughs> to that room. He's got to look at the face. They're gonna see. They're gonna see the clip all over the place. Man. We, can't, we, can't. we we did hear from I think it was Isaiah Horton, right? D that mm-hmm. a Nez Cooper, yeah, a real good basketball player, and that he's got a shot on him. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you, uh-oh, Tommy. Uh-oh, Tommy. <laughs> I don't know if it's say about cool. He think he he LeBron. <laughs> really, he's Shaq. <laughs> Shaq and oh, he's Shaq. He needs to stick to the paint. I mean, he do got a nice shot. He make it a couple times, but he uh, just we're getting, him we're up. getting conflicting reports now on uh, <laughs> on on Big Coop's ability. When we have him on here, we'll let him speak for himself, and we'll we'll let yeah. him give a full breakdown of his game for the people to to hear it yeah. directly from him. <laughs> That's right. Now, Tommy, we'll be calling you Tommy, but I know the coaches, they call you Bruno. Where'd that, where'd yeah. that nickname come from? I, I ask my parents this every day. <laughs> they, I just, I'm just, I'm named after my daddy. So I'm the fourth in the family, like the fourth after my dad. So I just, they call him Big Bruno and they just called me Little Bruno growing up. So I just took it and ran with it. And Outside of football, uh, Tommy, what, I mean, what are your interests? What would you say maybe life after football? would look like for you and you know in a perfect world i mean just talk to us a little bit about outside the football field for you uh really outside of football really just help the kids like just get back to the community just really that and like start up i want to start my own menace because of uh rondo fernandez mm-hmm. he just he's inspired me just to open my own business because he he had a he had a uh, major story too coming up he actually he got arrested mm-hmm. for like Drugs and stuff, but after he, he turned his life around to God and like started opening up, he opened up five businesses. Now he 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 just sold, I think, two of them, and like he's sitting in a good spot right now. That's, so I just want to great to surround yourself with people who you know yeah, lead that lead that example for you. And this interview right here, of course, with Kane's connection, right? And you mm-hmm. talked about giving back to the community. I know that you did an event with them last year at Sylvester. Yeah. Uh, I believe that was so. Talk talk a little bit about that experience, and then your experience with Kane's connection as a whole. Yeah. I mean, that's that experience with the kids. It just it just made me feel better inside because seeing them happy and like getting to teach them things. We get learned, tell, talk from like the, the colleges, the college, the coaches, and we just bring it to the kids and help them and develop and to get to this level, like what they got now, to get to this level and earn them scholarships. Like, what I can connect, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I'll ever get uh have these moments again. Yeah. So I'm just grateful for it. And it leads you to want to go do more of it, right? So that's yeah, I mean, definitely. Like, that's it, it. It's something that uh you know you're a football player, right? And that's mm-hmm. you know very important. But outside of it, in today's day and age, is yeah. just important. And that's what Kane's connection. Um, is helping all of you guys do as as athletes mm-hmm. there and Canes fans again. You can go to canesconnection.com to sign up and continue to support these great athletes like Big Bruno over here. <laughs> um, so, getting back to football a little bit, I mean, what's your favorite part about the game? Just having fun, just get the, just move people, get the, just maul people. That's the best part of it. Have fun with the, the teammates, actually, brothers. One part of it. Tommy, I want to ask you, I got family in Ocala, you know, and mm-hmm. is it, I see what they do, a lot of bass fishing. We got fishing down here, but 
but yeah. it's a different kind of lifestyle what they're doing from from down here. So talk about mm -hmm. the transition from Ocala to Coral Gables. Like it's, it's different <laughs> because it, back in Ocala we really didn't have much but horse riding and like we had a few spots. It was in Gainesville though, like David and Buster's or in Orlando we used to go out there and have fun. But Ocala it was really nothing. We just had to make something out of nothing. And down here it's a lot. It's like everywhere you go, you, it's parties. <laughs> you just got to stay focused down here. Though. That, that's the main point part of being down here. Just stay focused. I told you I wasn't going to ask you about it, but I'm assuming based on your answer, you you never really uh, got into the horseback riding out there. And, you know, kind mm, of I I wanted to, but I was like, nah, I ain't going to do it. And they, need, I, I was, they need a big horse. Man. <laughs> that's why I was saying. Horse. They need a big horse. <laughs> big horse. <laughs> um, we always ask the guys, Tommy, what they're listening to kind of on game day. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'll we'll ask you a couple more questions here before we let you go. But music-wise, man, what's uh, what's on your playlist normally on a on a game day or before a practice? Rod Wave, number one, Lil Baby, and Kodak. Okay, Kodak Black. I mean, listen, Kodak and Lil Baby, it's a similar vibe. But Rod Wave, you're getting sad before the game. What? You, nah, it's gonna tap into your feelings or what? I don't, I don't know why people say Rod Wave always sad. You just gotta listen to what he's talking about. That's that's the main thing. You just gotta listen to it. That's what I listen to. A man of substance. Like, a man of substance. I, yeah. I I appreciate that. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Now we'll, we'll end it kind of on a serious note here. You talked about your decision to come to Miami, Coach Cristobal, Coach Mirabal, being a big part of your development, right? Mm -hmm. Talk about where you're at right now, right? You've obviously been here for a bit now, but the, your development, your learning curve. We keep hearing great things about you this spring. Mm -hmm. your relationship with those guys and how they've taken you to the next level already. Yeah. It's, it's just, I improved a lot since last year. Like they'll tell you too, that like, I've been improving, just working, just working. That's all I've been. I got that chip on my shoulder that I want to be great and just, just make it to that starting position. And that's what I'm going to do too. I'm like they go help me. That's what they were saying. They help me. And then I physically gotta, it looks like you're taking a jump too. I mean, your body uh, is, is in a different place than when you got here too right i mean yeah. talk about kind of like where your weight's at right now and what you got here mm -hmm. at and and th that journey a little bit yeah when i got here i was like 348 now i'm like 320 like i just i just told him like i just want to get down lose a couple pounds and just turn it to muscle to get stronger that's more that's than what we've been doing more than a couple. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we've been doing too just trusting the process let me ask you real quick before I let you go. Mm. You know, I've been hearing about since I've been hearing about you. I've been hearing about your little brother. You know, his yeah. been a long time since we're talking about him. So, what can you tell us, 2026 uh, prospect? For those who don't know, what can you tell us about your brother's game and and what he brings to the table? I mean, he's gonna be a dude. Like he he already he just shot past me already. Like he's talking to me. He was here uh, last Saturday. Like I seen him. He just just growing, getting bigger and stronger. Like watching his film from last year, I mean it's gonna be great. And he played basketball too. So if he can if he can play both in college, that would be awesome for him. Cause I mean <laughs> I don't know, but I still lock him up. Uh, basketball. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there you, you go. Know. You had to, you had to throw it in there. You had to throw it in there. <laughs> had to. I don't know. The more I hear, man, we may need we we may need to see have a you know a, a, an offensive line. Three mm -hmm. on three, four on four. I think that's we'll really get a we'll get a good look of, of athletic ability in one of those. We gotta we gotta oh, set well. those up as long as coach allows, man. I know how they yeah. know how they are with basketball. So <laughs> I know, right? And we that's all like if you if Coop, Matt McCoy, and me and CC, we always talk about playing basketball, like just getting in the um the gym and just going yeah. in that hoop. We had one – it was in the summer. We had uh, a day, like four days off. So we had – took the whole team and just went to the uh, basketball court and just played pickup basketball with each other. And everybody was having fun. And it's all bonding, right? It's team bonding. Yeah. It's all part of the experience mm -hmm. and, and yeah. being in that locker room, which it's it's going to make a big difference, I think, this, mm -hmm. this upcoming season for sure. Definitely. And listen, Definitely. I promised we'd let you go, but you, you, you had to ask you this question. You mm -hmm. talked about you. You talked about um, – Francis Malanoa, Matt McCoy, and then this Cooper yeah. basketball field, uh, basketball court. Break down the games there. Those four games. How do you break down the games? Put your scouting report on. On basketball. Yeah, basketball. 
Uh, like what's positions? No, just uh, or, yeah, how you how they play. I mean, oh, who's how they play. On them? Who's got some? Who's got some ball handling ability? I mean, I see. Ball scouting report. Matt McCoy. He like. He a dunk on. He like he flashy. He he a dunk on you. Cool. He like he just sit in the he just sit like in the corner or something. He just shoot the ball. CC pass it to him in the paint. He just he'll go to work. And me, I'm point guard. You know. Okay. <laughs> I'm point guard. <laughs> who who was an Escalade? Mark Jackson's uh Mark Jackson's brother. Uh, rest in peace. The the and one street baller. You gotta look him up. Mm-hmm. Escalade. Uh, okay. Look up his highlights. See. He, I'll have to send something to you, man. You, I'll, I'll show you yeah. what I'm talking about. But the people listening, uh, they'll know who I'm talking about. He's he was a he was a real ball handler, and he was a big boy yeah. that way. So um, we'll we'll give you that comparison. But I don't know. I gotta I gotta lay my eyes on it first before I start to yeah. in a public forum like this. But Tommy Kinsler, man, it was awesome getting to know you a little yeah. bit. And Canes fans, if you want to support these awesome athletes at the University of Miami, canesconnection.com to sign up. Tommy, once again, man, awesome talking to you and appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you.